AR glasses, which effectively allow you to see through walls to, to a degree. These uh, are MIT researchers who have developed this augmented reality application, which allows you to essentially see through walls and boxes using RFID tags. So, you know, you could this could be used in like a warehouse uh, to locate items, or maybe even at home, if you're the type of person that loses their keys or their wallet or whatever. Um, and the AR will show where the product is, allowing you to see through walls, doors, boxes, whatever, to identify uh, where different products are. Um, think about air tags, basically, for, for, for a non-tech person, just having them uh, smaller and, and linked to every product when it's being produced and manufactured. So when you're seeing the world, you have a digital layer on top of that, which you can you know go to your settings, go, I want to find out where that T-shirt is, and then boom, it would just an arrow would point to that to that T-shirt, for, for example. Um, not a, an application which people have really done much with, with AR in terms of like RFID tags, but something that's starting to become more and more, more popular. Uh, that clip was DM'd to me on Instagram, so feel free to uh, send clips on there if that's your preferred platform. Um, what are your thoughts on on AR glasses allowing you to see through walls? Is it is it a gimmick? Is it is it something that could scale? Kojo, what's your opinion? I think the branding probably urges on the side of over promising a little bit. I mean, so you know, fundamentally, seeing through walls isn't quite what's happening, right? You, you kind of need a uh, the RFID system requires kind of a tagging and labeling and identifying of that. That that aside. Um, I think the, my initial response, my initial reaction to that was definitely just privacy and concerns. It, it seems to kind of uh, neglect this movement that we have around uh, technology being overly inv invasive, and I, I do worry about that with the sweep technologies, not just that one. Yeah. Um, I think that was my, my initial reaction. Um, slightly more interestingly, um, I remember. So this is, uh, I think this was, came out of an MIT project, if I remember what, what I was reading correctly. Yeah, MIT researchers yeah. put it together. Yeah. Um, I remember a few years back they released this product called the Alter Ego, which was kind of like an early uh, mock EEG type device where it, it, you hooked it up to kind of the side of your face and yeah. what it did, it would kind of read your 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 internal dialogue to try and map that to actions, right? So you could kind of talk to yourself and it would read the the muscle patterns as well as brain patterns to try and de derive the, the right action. Okay. Um, and, and I remember the debate and reaction around that was also, well, okay, think about how intrusive that could be if it could really read your thoughts in, in the tr truest sense. And there's a bit of a similar thing there that I thought when originally reading that, it's like, wow, this is actually quite amazing technology and I could see the upside of it. But again, are we are we doing a good enough job of uh, potentially uh, adding the right soft safeguards for, for the potential to misuse that technology? Yeah. Yeah. That was probably the main reaction I had uh, reading that. I, I love what you said there about the, the privacy because we had this issue with air tags with people, um, you know, putting them on people without them knowing about it. With this, you could you could have a display of where everybody is and you could have arrows and directions going towards them, which would be crazy. Um, what, what What's your take, Alex, when you when you see the story, when you see this clip, what, what comes to mind? Yeah, I mean, I think it, technologically, it's quite an impressive feat. I think it's it's solving quite a complex challenge. It's it's trying to map, you know, the, the RFIDs, they, they'll be, like, they emit on the basis of a signal you send at it. And it's trying to map that information over to the visual layer and then present that as a unified interface, which is like, it's a good problem. But again, it's like, yeah, I don't really see this becoming a mass market adoption thing. Sure. Um, I'm not even that convinced. I mean, certainly the, the lady in that photo didn't look like she was striding with purpose to the place where the, <laughs> the thing she was trying to find was. So it's clearly not perfect. And I'm not sure it's gonna you know, revolutionize warehouses anytime soon. Um, Versus, say, like a handheld scanner that like beeps when you go over the right box. Yeah, I mean RFID tags, wonderful technology. I think they're a yeah. fantastic mm -hmm. thing, and they and they have done already done enormous work in improving like how we ship and and manage all of that. Um, so interesting to see someone trying to use it for a new use case. Um, I think the article you sent us described them as creepy glasses. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm not entirely sure they're they're creepy. Um, I'm not entirely sure how you would even set it up to be creepy. Uh, and it also gave the use case of finding your shirt in a big pile of shirts. Okay, okay. To which I'd say, have you considered a wardrobe? <laughs> 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 but I, I think it's it's a very interesting problem they solved, uh, and you know, yeah. credit to them. But yeah, I think a few iterations away from being yeah, useful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty early stages, isn't it? I mean, m maybe one day when when you got the Apple, you know, AR glasses, and they they look like this, and and then boom, I get you've got an RFID on you with your. Um, you know, with your phone in your pocket, maybe it will have your, your name above your head, your age, you know, your, your likes, your dislikes, what you last tweeted. Maybe when they have that integration, it becomes a little bit more useful, that, that, that sort of thing. But right now, finding a shirt, pretty primitive use case, right? Um, what, what, what's your take, Adrian, <laughs> on, on all this? Well, my first, my first uh, problem was, again, uh, around privacy, I think. I 
thought that that was something that's not being discussed. Uh, but I'm not too worried in a way because again, it's it's something that started with this sort of silly example of the shirt, which it's appealing to a sort of B to C thing, and we know that. That's probably the hardest route to get those into the market. Yeah, the easiest one is very focused application. So I could see, for instance, firefighters wearing a a helmet that allows them, when they go to a certain building, to know exactly to look through the building and see where the different points of um, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. Uh, where the pipes are, uh, where the rooms are, where the doors are, understanding which doors they can open, which doors they can't, so the fire cannot, you know. Put, Lose, they can't lose. They don't have to lose control of the whole thing. They can isolate it. All of that sort of stuff. So applications which are very sort of niche focus, mm. but provide a huge degree of usability yep. and usefulness, rather than finding your shirt. But somehow those things are again clickbait. They want to just be thrown out there. So relate to something that we use in everyday life um, yep. and. Um, the technology is interesting. Yeah. FID tags are interesting. Everything around them. Uh, we've seen this sort of. I mean, also the w the the use of words see and uh, read in your example that you gave. It's sure, a sure. little bit overextended. It's just typical marketing stuff. <laughs> what, what all companies <laughs> do, is, don't yes. they, when they when they release something? Yeah. Um, it is, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you're right. There's there's probably going to be a couple of really good use cases that come from this identifying a shirt is probably not one of them no. but but the firefighter example you know great great example if you're going into a smoked building and you know you're trying to find people and they've got a, an apple watch on and that's got you know uh, some tag and it's and boom you've got a directions showing you where to go great you know if you've never been in that building before that could really really help and i mean that we, we've just come up with that on the spot there's probably a, a hundred more that, that, mm. we, that we could think of if we really had to rack our brains um, absolutely